Guys looking for coins to help build your God Squad, head on over to my coin sponsor, 5MaddenCoins.com. Cheap, fast, reliable. Right now, use code SLAY for 20% off, plus receive 10% extra free coins. Yo, what is going on guys? Slayback with another video. We got the Madden 21 gameplay deep dive. Now we're going to be covering everything. I took notes. I have screenshots. I have everything for you for those of you guys that missed the stream. Now if you guys are new around here, make sure you guys hit that sub button. Throw a like on the video, man. I hope you guys enjoy it. From everything that I read, it sounds good. Now to start this off, the beta did get pushed back. It was going to drop today, but they did push it back to a later day. So that's very unfortunate. Um, they did say follow along on Twitter, and we'll hear more about it there. If you did not get to sign up for the code, there will be additional codes put out. So just pay attention, man. As soon as I find out when the beta is, I will let you guys know through the community tab or through a video or anything like that. So make sure you guys got those notifications turned on. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so the Madden NFL 21 gameplay deep dive. Now we're going to be covering everything here, man. Now this is the Gridiron Notes. If you guys want this, I will share it on Twitter, at Slaying Slays. You guys will see it there. Now the run defense. Now they did make tackling improvements with the run defense. I also took notes. So let's go ahead and go through this. Now the ratings, ground reaching for the pylon. Now that is when you're diving to the pylon. The awareness in ball carrier vision plus defensive tackling is going to go into adjustments with that. And you will be able to figure out a little bit more. But with the run defense, simply put, stopping the running game in Madden 20 was too difficult for most. In Madden 21, for aim for a more balanced run pass ratio. So that is very good news. But we've made some improvements to our run fits and defensive gap systems with a strong emphasis on the force defender, who is the defender responsibility for setting the edge first to run. Specific improvements we've made towards that goal. You can see force defenders aligned on the line of scrimmage. will snap with the wider angles at the start of the play. But what that means is like, say you're in a 3-4 and you're outside linebackers and they take those really bad angles. They're going to take more wider angles to kind of help stop the stretch and set the edge versus outside running plays. Now, force defenders will show more anticipation in the pursuit angles at the start of the play when facing quick hitting outside running plays, such as jet sweep and touch pass, so they'll get better position to set the edge. So a lot of people that ran a lot of jet sweeps and touch pass and stuff like that, in Madden 20, they were very, very effective. In Madden 21, what they're saying is they're going to have wider and better pursuit angles to help stop that, so people won't be able to span that as much. And then what else do we got? We got a lot of these edge and force defenders will have wider gap integrity versus heavy uh, wing tight end sets. We got new improved blocking interactions with defenders disrupting running lanes by pushing blockers further into backfield during engagements versus all type of run plays. So that's pretty good. Defenders will have better anticipation of the ball carries movement by taking smarter angles while after shed blocking. So it seems like they did a lot of things for the run defense. That is exactly what we need. Madden 20 was way too run heavy. And later on in the notes, you will see they did some stuff to passing. They did a lot of different things that just make this overall better. And from everything they're saying, man, I'm very excited about it. I cannot wait to get my hands on it and be able to play it. Now, the tackling improvements. So in addition to the upgrades to our run fit system, we know how important tackling is to the defense as well. We didn't just add the new breakdown of pylon tackles. We also made some improvements to existing tackling systems to make tackling more accessible and a stronger part of countering the run game. So I'm thinking it's going to be like a lot less more broken tackles. Now hit stick and dive tackles have been tuned down to make them more accessible and functional. All of which come together with our new breakdown tackles for a more intuitive defensive experience. So that's good, man. We definitely need tackling improvements. Location-based tackles. We got the zone drop coach adjustment. Now this is something new. Now a lot of people when you realize when you throw rollout corners, your zones don't drop far enough back to stop that corner. Now, is the screenshot you can see right here. You will be able to adjust the zone drop of your corners. So, from the notes I got right here, you can go anywhere from 5 to 30 yards max to be able to drop these guys out. Now, the coaching adjustment is 5 to 30 yards. It will turn off all match coverages, though. So, say if you're running cover 3 match and you have that set to where you want your guys to drop 15 yards back, your cover three match, your match coverage for all of those will not work whatsoever. Right here, it also says that when facing a no huddle offense, you can turn off these coaching adjustments by using the reset play option, the pre-play adjustment menu. So this is something that you're going to have to bring into your game, man. It could really, it's more, more advanced for the more advanced players. 
But being able to use this coaching adjustment, and if you're getting beat by the rollout corners for 15 yards, you guys only drop back 10. You can put these guys at 15 yards. It should help stop that. So that's a real big thing that they added. I'm very excited about that. Also, quarterback and passing improvements. Throwing out of sacks. You can see this right here. Now, I did take some notes on this. The way it is with the throwing out of sacks, the earlier the animation of the throw, when you're getting sacked, it is going to be inaccurate. If you're farther in the animation where the ball is about to be coming out, your arm is going more forward, you're going to get more of an accurate pass. So that's actually really, really good, man. I like that a lot. And then we got a new, along with everything they did, they tuned a lot of different stuff. They made things a lot better. We've added a new max distant passing power penalty, which will activate when targeting a receiver who's deeper than the quarterback's max passing distance, stuff like that. They got a new feature. It's called under pressure throws. So what it is, is specifically 40 plus yard passes will speed up the throwing animation. Remember in Madden 20, especially in the beta in the beginning of the year, where if you were throwing a deep pass, it seemed like it took forever for your quarterback to release the ball. Now, with the new feature, under pressure throws, you will be able to make that throw and it will be faster and better. And it will be a lot, lot, it would be like gunslinger for the most part. So 40 plus yard passes, but it would only go 40 plus yards. It has to be at least 40 yards minimum. We'll speed up throwing animation to get the ball out quicker. And what is going to be, it's going to be a stat. It's going to be TUP, which is throw under pressure. And it's going to be power and accuracy ratings. So that is good, man. I like that a lot. So if you got a deep route and you're 40 plus yards, you're going to be able to get the ball out instead of taking that long wind up and taking the sack. Catching responsiveness. Like many other features and improvements, Madden 21 has a strong focus on player control and agency catching is no different. We made a few tweaks to our catching system to offer more stick work towards making plays. So that's actually really good. Players can now dictate the direction they want their catch to take them as they secure the catch via left stick input. So with your left stick, you'll be able to do a lot more. For example, when holding up vertical on the left stick and using the possession catch, you'll be selecting a possession catch that will fall in the same direction as your stick input. So say you throw a 10 yard out and you go to possession catch it, but you're holding left stick, you'll fall forward. I believe that's what they're saying. So that's actually really good as the responsiveness allows receivers to quickly turn up the field after using rack run after catch. One obvious case to notice improvement is when a receiver is nearing the sideline, the user will have to control him in bounds as he turns up the field rather than running out of bounds. So that's actually really good, man. If you throw like a 10 yard out, you'd be able to catch it and be able to turn him up field. That's nice. Player personnel packaging. For those players who like to get creative with their formation personnel on offense, we've added a new way to use packages and formation subs while using audibles. Actual personnel on the field, when changing your personnel in the play call menu, either via packages or formation subs, that is like when you're in the play call menu and you flick your right stick to change your formation subs, your pre-play audibles will now match the personnel package on the field. If you're using 12 personnel, one running back and two tight ends in formation like gun empty flex, you will be able to audible to any other formation in your playbook that also uses 12 personnel. Or now this feature only applies to the offense. So that is huge. So say if you're in like um, a two tight end set, you'll be able to audible to any other two tight end set in, the, in your entire playbook. So that is completely huge right there. So coming out in like gun A slot, you're going to be able to do a lot of different things with that. That is actually really, really good. So I like that a lot. Okay, balance for pre-played audibles and play flips and pre-play. Another aspect of bringing more balance to the run-pass ratio Madden 21 is the authentic solution for spanning audibles and play flips by the offense before the snap until the advanced alignment up for a running play is found. So a lot of people flipping the play and doing that kind of stuff, your guys are going to be more likely to jump off sides. So that's really good. The offense will now have the risk of the offensive line committing a false start penalty after the use of multiple audibles or flip plays. That's really good. I like that a lot because a lot of people come out there and just flip their play 100 times on you. Now their guys are going to jump off sides. Player fatigue for out of position ball carries. Now this is actually huge. So people that run, now this is for anybody that's not a running back. So people that run with their quarterback, people that run wildcat with their wide receiver, these guys are going to get really, really tired. And you, they can get so tired that you're going to have to sub them out to where they can get their energy back. So I like that a lot. Now this is going to count for anybody that is running the ball that is not a running back. And obviously the more times you run it, the more tired they get and they're at risk for fumbling a lot more. The fumble chance is way higher. 
Now you can see right here it says the risk applies to non-running back plays like wildcat power, jet sweep, touch pass, and quarterback blast as they get tired. You'll notice to become less effective on the field regardless of their role. Thereafter, these players will need to be subbed out of the game if overused. If not subbed out, their player will continue to de uh, degrade as they get more tired. The system will be used on both competitive and simulation game styles. So it's coming to weekend league. So the pass lead abilities from Madden 20 were fairly polarizing. You know if you would pass lead, the ball would go way over their head or way out of bounds or something like that. They tuned that. They made this a lot better. They allowed you to make some impressive plays and throw receivers open in the best circumstances. But more often than not, they could result in throwing uncatchable passes that were out of reach of receivers. Increased leading distance of these abilities and instead boost the ball's velocity when using the precision passing mechanic on the left stick in the combination with the bullet pass. This new benefit greatly reduces the ability for defenders to make play on the ball when making the correct read. So if you make the correct read with a pass lead, the defenders are not going to be able to react to the ball as well as they have in the past, which is really good. This new benefit greatly reduces the ability for defenders to make a play on the ball when making the correct read and should prove to be powerful perk for pocket passers. Realize that, pocket passers. Okay, so this is a perk, a powerful perk for pocket passers. Say that with me three times. Powerful perk for pocket passers. So Lamar Jackson, all these guys that aren't pocket passers, it's not going to be a great perk for them. So there's also new abilities coming. Now, they're keeping some old abilities, but there's new ones coming. They haven't detailed what they are, but there are new ones coming. Dead leg. Now, there is some things. Now, with the run game, trucking was always up on the right stick. Now, it's going to be Y this year. So, hurdle is now up on the right stick, and Y is now trucking. But then they got dead leg. Dead leg is something they added new that is down on the right stick. And what that is is pretty much a way of learning if stop and go. You're going to be able to pretty much stop on a dime. So... Other people like me and a lot of players can do that now, but now there's an actual button for it. Down on the right stick, you'd be able to dead leg. Blocker resistance is new. Now, what that means is say you have Von Miller on the right side and Bradley Chubb on the left side. This is the example they gave you. Now, you'll be able to see in this screenshot right here, there's these little bars underneath the lineman. So with these little bars underneath the lineman, is if you keep D-line rushing this guy, you are beating him off the right side a lot. He's going to build up resistance to get that, and you won't be able to beat that as much. But if you sub Von Miller to the other side, now that guy has no memory of Von Miller, so you'll be able to beat him there. And then you can put Bradley Chubb on this side. But if you switch, if you sub Von Miller away from that right tackle and then back to the right tackle, he's still going to have the memory on Von Miller and have that resistance built up. So you have to figure out different ways to beat them. But that about covers it, man. If you guys want these notes, make sure you guys go on Twitter. EA tweeted them. I'll tweet them for you guys. You guys can check them out. There's a lot to cover on here, obviously. But I believe I went over all the key things. Like I said, one of the biggest things, they improved passing. They're making the game balanced. They fixed run defense. Like I said, there's going to be more chances for the beta. So make sure you guys are stay tuned on that. I'll try to tweet out everything that I know. But make sure you guys get ready. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, make sure you guys hit that like button. Throw a sub on the channel. I greatly appreciate it, man. We got big things coming from Madden 21. I will catch you guys on the next one.